Hi, my name is Christina Troche, and my presentation is called Women of Battle Become Women of Strength. Imagine being forced to go live in another country with an unfamiliar person. You're required to reside with them. You are unable, unable to speak or understand the country's language, and you have little understanding of the country's social norms. Where and how would you begin to adapt to your new life? On the other hand, imagine being struck in a world that has been destroyed by an airborne pandemic and you're at loose ends, hoping to survive, being unable to expose your voice or existence. How would you cope in a world like this? Two female characters in two different stories. Kenley used the paper menagerie and Octavia Butler's speech sounds demonstrate how they handle their misfortunes and come out on top before their stories end. They are the epitome of how women of battle become women of strength. The Paper Menagerie is based on the child Jack, who is Chinese and American. His mother, who is a Chinese native, was sent as a mail-ordered bride for his father, an American man. The story illustrates the prejudice with which their neighborhood makes a mockery out of their marital relationship. Jack's mother is an expert at creating origami and makes characters that magically come alive. Jack's favorite origami tiger is called Leao. At one point, Jack is playing with his friend Mark. Mark teases Jack about his mother and his father's relationship. Jack becomes embarrassed and resentful against his, against his mother, telling her that she must learn the English language and that she must learn the culture, and he tells her that he wants real toys, not disposable origami. Jack's mom is crushed and tries to ignore his request. Jack becomes offended and makes an aggressive decision to mentally avoid and deaden his Chinese identity, as well as his relationship with his mother. Jack abandons his memories by storing away his finely cared for origami characters in his attic. Years pass as Jack, facing his mother on her deathbed, communicates very little sorrow and expresses bitterness and resentfulness toward her underneath his breath. He refuses carelessly her last dying request not to forget his culture. One day, Jack receives a reminder about the Day of the Dead, when his previously saved origami characters become alive. He finds a secret letter written inside his favorite origami character. Jack cannot understand the Chinese writing inside of Leao, so he goes out to find a translator. This letter, directly written to him from his mother, explains her cultural history, how she was forced to be a housemaid at a young age, the suffering from the loss of her parents, her risks when she entered herself into a dating catalog, the struggles she endures to have a better life in America and for the life of her future child. When translated, the letter expresses Jack's mom's sorrow about his resentment toward her and how heartbroken she is. It questions his cruelty as a person and asks in disbelief how her son could have turned out so wretched. She points that the saddest part about aging is not taking care of your loved ones. As the translator looks at him in disgust, Jack becomes flooded with guilt and walks away in a new revelation of his mother's fight for his freedom. This experience results in Jack's newfound ability to embrace his culture. He finally walks away with a new sense of purpose and the love for origami pieces that his mother created during her life. In speech sounds, we enter a world of the aftermath of a pandemic. Rai, a woman who is married with two children, is traveling to go visit her brother in Pasadena. She has been struck by an airborne virus that, rather than killing the population, degrades or immobilizes a person's ability to clearly communicate. She is the only survivor of her family. Living the survival of the fittest, Rai is in a panic when she finds herself in public transportation, caught in a gas attack between terrorists and survivors. As she heads out, she defends herself and is targeted as bait by the group of lusty men. A valiant man, man comes to the rescue, taking her away. Obsidian, as he is known, cares for her and Rai falls in love with him. She asks him not to leave and he decides to stay with her. When she, sees, when she sees another man trying to attack his wife, 
Obsidian goes to the rescue only to be too late, getting stabbed fatally himself. Rai is left in solitude again when she decides to adopt the two children that were orphaned. Rai and Jack's mom are both women in battle who became women of strength. They have their similarities and differences. Rai suffers from continual loss of her entire family in her dreams. She began to find hope for love when she found Obsidian to only relive the nightmare once again. She lives a legacy to take care of two orphan children that can communicate clearly like she does. Rai has an unbreakable spirit even when she has faced her darkest times of depression and thoughts of suicide. She is a warrior and forever faithful to the people that stay true around her and she is their protector. Jack's mom has parental loss but deals with the emotional and social loss of her son who is bitter toward her. Jack's mom faced abandonment and family separation, terminal illness, as well as death herself. Her legacy lives on her within her son's dreams and within the tiger layout. Jack's mom is left to deal with her absent child and gives up trying to convince him to love her at an early age. Jack's mom finds strength within herself to live somewhat of an ideal American life. When she becomes ill, she lightens her load further and just doesn't give Jack's difficult nature much importance, but sends him off with a blessing. Likewise, Jack's mom and Rye face losing their most significant physically emotional support. Jack's mom and Rye lose their parents and husband. They both face loneliness in a place that inhabits people. Jack's mom lives in a community where her marriage is not accepted. She doesn't get the familiar support that is much needed. The racist neighbors talk behind her back saying, he seems like a normal enough man. Why did he do that? Something about the mixing never seems right. The child looks unfinished, slant eyes, white face, a little monster. Do you think that he can speak English? Rye lost her entire family and is alone. She relies on herself to get through her difficult times. The pandemic wiped away her most beloved people in her life, her husband, children, parents, and siblings. The illness not only murdered people, but killed friendships and relationships. With the lack of communication and the silence growing, the idea of blaming the Russians became a minuscule thought. Coping with death was dominated by the incomprehensible communication of conflicting gestures, beast-like grunts, and sign language. It had struck everyone in destruction or debilitation. Rye and Jack's mom are, are both part of an unaccepting society. Jack's mom is a foreigner who isn't acculturated to her community, so she is neglected by her neighbors. Rye must hide, especially being a vulnerable woman, and she must disguise her secret of having the ability to speak. She would be killed if anyone knew. Moreover, both female characters must endure inhumane silence. While Jack's mom was traveling to Hong Kong, she couldn't speak or she would be traded into slavery. She couldn't speak out of the discrimination she endured in her country and for the prejudice she felt in her American community. Similarly, Rai faced fear trying her hardest to survive because if she spoke to anyone, she would be hunted down. She had used sign language and body language to express her meanings. Only at the end of the story, when she meets two children who also retain the ability to speak can Rye talk clearly in her own voice and claim her own name? I'm Valerie Rye, she said, savoring the words. It's all right for you to talk to me. Jack shuns his mother because she is different than the other moms in the community. As her son said, we are not like other families. Other families don't have moms who don't belong. Both Rai and Jack's moms were wives, and both took care of their children within their important family roles in the household. Throughout their struggles, they wanted to be the best woman that they can be for their families. They left a legacy of fighting for what they believed in, for their freedom, for their acceptance as the nurturers in the family, for being warriors during difficulties, and for being the strong women that they are portrayed to be. Jack's mom and Rye are influential characters as superwomen that can overcome obstacles just as real women do in many real life scenarios. Their determination to stay strong during persecution is an inspiration to young women as myself trying to move steadily ahead in their lives. Their stories express that there is nothing impossible in life and that regardless of the hardships that one encounters, 
there is a light at the end of the tunnel and one must persevere through it all. Jack's mom and Rye, women of strength, we honor you.